So California is in the middle of a historic drought. Um, it, some would say that the drought's been running for about seven years with, uh, with one wet year nestled in the middle. And it's creating some serious strains on the state's water supply. Urban communities are being asked to reduce water in any way they can. And one such strategy that the Berkeley Climate Action Coalition is promoting in, uh, in our local community is using gray water. Yeah, so gray water is a fantastic uh, way to reuse water that's been used once within your house. So here today at our workshop, we're discussing a laundry to landscape gray water system where it's a really simple system where you take water from your laundry machine and through a, a very simple set of pipes, uh, send it outside to your non-edible landscape. Uh, and what's nice about this system is that not only is it easy to install, but you don't need a permit to install it in Berkeley. How often do you do wa a laundry? How, do you have a front-loading washing machine or do you have a top-loading? You're creating one zone, one irrigation zone that's just based off your washing machine. So when you think about that, well, how many loads do I do a week? How often is it once on the weekend, three loads at a time? Most people kind of wait and they, they do all their laundry at one time. Some people, it's scattered throughout the week. So how much you generate and how often you generate the water is, an, is a design consideration. A common practice is not to send the gray water higher than five feet from the pump, which is usually at the bottom of the washing machine. You're sending the water right out of the washing machine, keeping it the same diameter, one inch, no less. All the parts are one inch plumbing. That makes it easy for your pump to send the water out. You don't want a restriction on it. You don't want it to go from one inch to half inch because that's putting back pressure on the pump. So you'll see as we go through the workshop, everything stays one inch all the way out until the emitters. Then it goes down to half inch. There's no drip emitters. There's no holes that require pressure. It's all simple ball valve. When you look at your site, where, where do you put 80 gallons of gray water a week? How do you spread it out? What plants want it? Um, this is mounted in this fa uh, orient orientation. Washing machine hose, the, the pump hose, comes into here. We're going to hose clamp it on here. Now you have two ways to get out. One will be sewer. This is going to be, in this case, this is going to be sewer because the sewer standpipe's here. And then you just turn the handle, you'll see the arrow. That way. When you turn it up, now it's going that way. And that'll be the garden. So this is to be mounted above the washing machine, close somewhere behind the washing machine and above it, so that you can get the hose in, connect it to the sewer, and run it out. Now it could be the other way, it doesn't matter which side's which, it's just in this site we're going to set it up that way. Here is an anti-siphon. When your washing machine does a load and it pumps out the water, if you don't have an anti-siphon, 
or a check valve, but in the case of the kit, we'll just stick to this. What could happen is that if the water line coming out, the pump line is full and there's water sitting and it hasn't drained all the way, the next cycle turns on, it could siphon that dirty water back into the washing machine. This keeps that from happening because the little air, this little spring lets air come in so it kind of breathes in between. So the water pumps out, when it's done it goes and the next load isn't going to get contaminated by siphoning the old And they give you these fittings. These are barbed fittings. These are, this is blue lock. They call these uh, just compression fittings. You cut the pipe, you push it in. I feel it's easier to work with this, to push this in, than to jam this into the pipe. Now, if you've got, you know, if you work out and you got <laughs> strength, it's like here. Somewhere here, we have the valve box. This is basically a way to keep mulch, dirt, whatever, from clogging the line that comes in. This is what's going to be inside here. We'll drill a hole maybe two inches down, and this will be what's in there. And you can adjust it how much you want. Full, open, cracked a little. If you crack these a little, pressure builds equally throughout the whole system, and everything gets an equal amount. If you open one all the way, most of the water will find its path of least resistance, right? So drill a hole. They also sell them with purple lids. But this protects this and gives it clearance. This is Netafilm or TechLine. There's no, there's no drip emitters. You see, it's solid. This is for connecting sections where you're just sending water. These push inside. Same way. About four or five yep. times. So now when you thread it in, right, it doesn't unravel. Exactly. And then you're like uh, fighting it. So Teflon these in. So tools are, you know, wrenches are wrenches, sometimes, sometimes they're not. Uh, we've got PVC pipe cutters, stronger, able to ratchet and cut through the pipe. These are more for the blue lock. Anybody know the name of these? Channel locks. Channel locks, nice. More. More channel locks. <laughs> kind of vice grippy channel locks, kind of a nice little. Ooh, what's this called? Piper. Yeah? Do you know who invented it? <laughs> this is a Ford wrench. Everyone has a pair of something, one of these or the other, as long as they have a big enough mouth to open up and twist these together. A flexible tube right here that had been going right here into the sewer line, so that's where all the drainage was going, all the water when it spun and drained, so he pulled that out and he put the, um, what's that one called again? The three-way valve. Three-way valve, thank you, the brass three-way valve on. Uh, one of the the reason why we have a little inside piece just about is because these are the same size and mm -hmm. they should okay. be the same size. Well, well, the two of you can help. And then we glued all these sections together and just put the brackets back on. So here's and so it's sections. Yeah. Um, for stucco, you need a cement bit. They don't have a hole saw this big that you know is cheap. So what we do is we just drill a bunch of small holes with a smaller drill bit, and then knock it out with a hammer. Yeah. And we're gonna put silicone back in here. So you want this, you know several inches above the main line here. This is the height of the whole thing all the way back, right here. All the way back. So we keep this level, we don't go up. You can go down, but it's best to try and keep it all level with the system until you pop out. Follow the pipe here. So, uh, okay. so Phyllis, we're talking about... We don't know if we could come today. 
like, oh, take serious notes, help right. us. So there'll be. What's that? Right. Oh, okay. Whoa! Wow! Wow! Hey, you just won't even know this was here. Here it comes. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Changed them down to half. Yeah, I think we were like making sure a little bit less than half. They used to try and put screens and socks and filters, and then we realized that it's easier to just open your valve boxes and pull the little pieces of lint and hair out of the soil. This is a very simple system. So the, the main thing is that you can install it in a weekend and then monitor, monitor it. Go out when, it's, when your washing machine's pumping the load out and see how it's spreading and you can adjust it. It can sometimes be hard to figure out exactly what is in your soaps. So we mentioned the Oasis Laundry Liquid brand because that was designed specifically to be uh, to work in harmony with soil and plants. So that's a sure thing. Uh, we, we sell it at the Ecology Center.